Hey guys, welcome back. So this is the follow-up video about the temperature controlled fan and in this video I would like to uh, show you and tell you a bit more about this test setup and how I get my resistance R2. So remember the last time I showed you these circuits over here and the main difference between these rows is that uh, from this row to this row, you have input-output uh, filtration. From this row to this row, there's also input and output short circuit protection. And this circuit over here that I'm using to trim my, um, my circuit is essentially this one over here. It uses uh, whatever thermistor I'm going to use. In this case, a 1 kilo ohm thermistor. It can also be a 2.5 kilo ohm thermistor. And I have a 1 kilo ohm resistor in series with, in this case, a 10 kilo ohm multi turn potentiometer. And the overall resistance of these two determines the resistance R2. So the thing is, in LM317, you can calculate everything. You can calculate R1, R2, the voltage. Problem is, you need uh, the other two variables. So for the voltage, you need R1 and R2. For R2, you need the output voltage and R1 and so on. But in this case, because we are using a thermistor as R1, the uh, resistance cha changes uh, depending on the temperature. So what you would have to do to set either your starting point or end point is to measure the resistance of your resistor at that point. And if you measure it, then you would have to do calculations. What you could do instead is use this circuit over here and insert on this uh, point between R1 and R2, so th this is R2, our R2, uh, between here and here, just two measuring points. And these are these two pins over here. I don't know if you can see them. We have two pins over here, and they measure the overall resistance of the potentiometer and our protecting resistor that is in series. So this over here. And I'm just completely ignoring calculations. I'm just setting my starting point or my end point, measuring the voltage, and then I'm connecting the, um, the, the fan and take a look at the behavior. You could obviously uh, use this kind of a circuit for each and every project, but I think it's kind of a waste to use a multi turn potentiometer or any potentiometer in that case, because when do you really change the fan speed? What I do is I change it once, and then I'm going to make one of these with a fixed resistance value, because uh, with this setup I can test the fan right uh, over here. I don't need to have this set up within a project. And also there are two things you can do with uh, the setup. You can either uh, use an LED like I do, and I um, now have permanently installed an LED on a piece of wood with aluminium. The last time the LED got lifted up and had no good thermal contact. This happens quite a often when I uh, try to do this, so I decided to use one LED and permanently install it over here. And you can either use an LED and control voltage and current with a power supply, or you could just uh, install it in your project, measure temperature uh, at the same time with the uh, resistance, with the thermistor connected to your uh, adjustable circuit and then just uh, adjust it while installed in the project. Now what I also changed is this over here. This looks a bit uh, weird. I used a lot of electrical tape and what I tried here to do is I have this two pin connector that can be connected to the circuit for the thermistor and I tried to get the thermocouple as close as possible to the thermistor so that the actual temperature can be read uh, more accurately. Let's see if I can focus that. So you might be able to tell or not. Yeah, like that. So the thermistor is actually really close 
uh, to the the K type thermocouple probe. And by doing that, I also eliminate a little bit of error when measuring temperature. It's not a big deal, but it makes everything a bit easier. Then everything is held in place by this helping hand over here. I'm trying to get the uh, thumb couple and the thermistor uh, just barely touching the aluminium and now I will apply a bit of thermal paste to allow better thermal transfer and this should be enough. Now we have to turn on the multimeter, our thermometer and the secondary power supply that controls the LED and that's really bright. Okay, so perfect. Now I will supply whatever voltage. Oh yeah, and here's another thing with this circuit. The LM317 can uh, drop uh, a lot of voltage. I mean, it has a voltage input range of, what was it, like... Uh, I, remember, I don't remember the starting point, but I think it's maximum 37 volts. So you might think with this circuit you can uh, get 37 volts into the circuit. That's not the case. You have to keep in mind that the LM317 is connected to a thermocouple. If the thermocouple resistance goes too low, the uh, voltage would rise beyond what your fan might be rated for. Now you could change resistance R2 to account for that, but then it might just start really late, actually. It might start instead of spinning right away or spinning at uh, whatever starting point it might uh, start way later than you want it to start. So when you have, for example, this power supply over here will be equipped with one of these and that's the circuit for it. So in this case I have a 24 volt power supply inside and what I will do is uh, I will still use the buck converter that is currently connected to the fan and I will drop the voltage down to 14 volts from 24 to 14 volts with a buck converter. I will then feed in the 14 volts into this circuit over here or rather this circuit that is going to be installed and you have to keep in mind that the L317 has at least a 1.25 volt voltage drop it might be a bit more so I'm accounting for 2 volt voltage drop so that my 12 volt fan that is currently installed uh, will just spin perfectly fine at the target uh, temperature which this is set for. So when you try to calibrate this circuit and figure out your resistance R2 you have to supply the voltage to it that you actually are going to supply to. So if you have a too high voltage, use a buck converter and get it down to like two volts higher than what your fan needs. Even if the voltage drop is only 1.25 volts, uh, that's not a problem. All fans, they are perfectly fine if you drive them 10% above their voltage uh, limit. More than plus 10% voltage is not recommended. Each fan each type manufacturer they do behave differently but 10% in my experience is typically uh, fine. In this case I'm just going to supply 12 volts to the circuit and I will trim resistance R2 to hit a target temperature and I think I will trim this to let's say I'm going for the starting point. Let's say I want a starting point of 40 volts. I'm going to supply voltage to the circuit 12 volts we have currently 10.9 volts. The starting voltage of the fan that I used in the last video was, I think, around, was it 5 or 6 volts? Let's say it's 6 volts. It's 6 volts starting point at 40 degrees. So I have to trim the circuit to hit 6 volts at 40 degrees Celsius. Now the thermometer is powered on. And I'm now going to activate the power supply. Now I'm going to get the 
voltage up a tiny bit, rather a bit more so it heats quicker, just like that. And then I try to cycle in by adjusting the voltage and the current. What I find to be really easy is to make the 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 uh, curse adjustment with the voltage and the fine adjustment with the current. Now I am actually at 40 volts. It's just slightly going down. So let's let warm up and I have to change resistance R2 to go to 6 volts. Okay, I'm slightly under 6 volts. Now let's let it drop back down for the last time. And then we will take a look at the behavior of the fan and when it actually hits 100% speed. Yeah, that's okay. So 5.95 at 40 degrees Celsius. The problem is you have to keep in mind that the uh, readings are not as responsive as the the mystery is. It constantly changes its resistance. Now we take a look at the fan. Okay, the starting voltage was 5 volts. That sucks. I have to change to 5 volts. Okay, this fan is really special. It has such a low starting point. Typically 12 volt fans, they start at like 5 or 6 volts to spin, but this one, holy moly, it spins even at 3 volts. So what I'm now going to do is use my main bench power supply and see what the actual starting point is. Let's set the voltage to 2 volts. Turn it on. Nothing. Okay, 3 volts and it spins. And that's the problem. With this one kilo ohm protective resistor in uh, with R2, it can't go below three volts. So that's not a good demonstration for a starting point. But we can change that to the end point. We can say that at 40 degree, it is supposed to spin at its full 12 volts. And here you can see it's a 12 volt DC fan. Okay, so this is 10.55 volts at 40.1 degrees Celsius. I call this good enough and now I will install the fan. This is essentially how I get my voltages and as I said, now I can install the fan and see if it behaves the way I like it to. So you can either, you can hear it, it spins at 100%. I now use the fan to cool it down, the thermistor, LED and everything, it should just settle down. It cools down. And... Fan speed goes down. Because now, it actually changes the fan speed. But not by a whole lot, because room temperature is at... Let's see, room temperature is at 27 degrees Celsius, so it can't really go too low. It can't go below 27 degrees Celsius. This is how I get resistance R2, how I trim my circuits, and then uh, make the fixed resistance circuits for my projects. And in another video, I will install one of these in here, and uh, I will make a link into the description of this video. If you haven't seen the first video, that's really important, uh, you should take a look at the first video first. Although I'm just telling you that in the end. Well, I'm not perfect. So I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please leave a like, comment down below. And other than that, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!